Good morning and welcome back to the Empty Angler indoors. Today I'm going to be telling you nine ways that you can find new fishing grounds uh, both indoors, at home and on land for free and a couple of paid ones as well. All of these help me find new fishing grounds and have helped me catch fish and I've done it all while not even fishing. So here is number one. A simple diary uh, overlooked by so many people, yet every single successful fisherman I know keeps a diary of some description. It's not enough just to try and have photos and scroll back on Facebook, 21st century and all that, okay? Keep a solid diary, uh, day to a page. Uh, in there, every trip you have out, be it land or shore, you write the tide, the weather, the conditions, the baits and the rigs, uh, and you write it all down there. And come next year when you're umming and ahhing where to go fishing, a simple quick look back on last year's diaries will tell you all you need to know and give you a good head start as to where to go on your next trip. Also as well, this is used in conjunction with every other method that I'm going to tell you in a minute. If you see someone else catching on a, on a, on a, on a group or whatever, or you hear something, stick it in the diary, because even though you haven't been fishing, if someone else has caught fish, it needs to be going in here. As well, if you're a boat fisherman like I am, a book for your marks in where you've caught fish as well. I have got absolutely hundreds of marks in here without giving too many away. There is absolutely stacks of marks in there from my commercial fishing days, from old charter fishermen been, who are uh, no longer with us, some that are still with us, um, and marks that I've seen from, uh, again, other methods that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Everything gets put in a little Bible as it was, and you can see there that is a chunky book of marks all over the south coast. Eastbourne, New Haven, Brighton and beyond, this covers it all, all the way out to the French side of the channel and back to our coast again. Absolutely vital. If you're not keeping diaries and notes of all your marks and catches, you are hampering yourself massively. Number two, the most obvious one in the 21st century is social media groups. I'm talking about Facebook groups, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, all that sort of stuff. It costs nothing to join these. If you're not on them, you are missing out massively. This is probably the most simplest one that I'm going to talk about. Um, but in there, people post up catch reports. In fact, it's actively um, encouraged to post catch reports. And once again, you will be able to see from landscape pictures where they're fishing. They may even say where they're fishing. Uh, and again, all of that then goes into your diary. Such and such caught this many bass, this many squid, this many cod at this time. You can check on an app on your phone what the tide was, put it in your diary, and then next year you've got a good head start on where to go. If you're not following the social media groups in your local area, get on there and do it. Number three is YouTube channels. And the first one I'm going to talk about is fishing YouTube channels. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're watching this, chances are you're probably watching it on YouTube. Give it a like, give it a follow, because it costs nothing and it helps me out. And again, I'm going to keep putting this information out there. As long as you want it, I'll keep sharing it, okay? However, following all your local fishermen who have YouTube channels will be a vital source of information for you, because they will, again, much like the Facebook groups and stuff, they will post up what they're catching and where. Now, if you're a boat fisherman, and certainly some specialist shore fishing, like bass fishermen and stuff like that, they're not going to tell you where they're fishing. You might not like it and you might think, well, why don't you share that information? And the reason that the good marks aren't always shared is because if we're out catching fish, let's talk turbot. If we're out catching 10, 15, 20 turbot on a mark, I've got a select few people that I will share this sort of information with. And they do the same with me and we trust each other. So if someone's not catching mark or on one mark, we can say, well, we had some here and vice versa. If we put that information out to the masses, the next time we go to go fishing, there's going to be 10, 15 boats all over it, and the fishing that was once good is then going to be gone, and it's going to be knackered. You're then going to have people who don't know what they're doing, driving all over the wrecks, or doing trying to cut people up on the drifts, which you'd be surprised happens all the time, and tempers get flared, and it's just not a good environment for everybody. However, what you will find is some fishermen will inadvertently whether it's through inexperience or by accident, will maybe flash the marks where they're fishing to you by mistake. This happened at the weekend. Someone was fishing a reef. They were catching squid, bass, and a few other bits and bobs um, 
on a mark and they showed the fish on the sounder and in the bottom right was the numbers for the mark. A quick look on the Navionics app, which I'm going to come on to in a minute, and it showed the exact location and reef of where they were fishing, and those numbers are now written down in my marks book, along with all the information in my diary of what they were catching and where. So that's another reason. Uh, if you think that's sneaky, it's not sneaky, it's just, just how it goes. But they are a vital source of information, and if you're not following your local fishermen, you should be. Sticking with YouTube now, YouTube diving channels. Um, one that maybe isn't known so much or maybe isn't thought to do. Uh, but for me, I do like fishing a lot of wrecks. And I like to know what wreck I'm fishing and what type of wreck it is. Because it will tell me what I need to do with my tackle. Um, especially for conga fishing, divers love to go down and film their footage just like fishermen do. A quick search of your local diving channels. And they'll have all the wrecks on there that you could wish for. And they will show you whether it is steel. Is it wood? Is it broken up? Is it in one piece? If they get low enough or in the little hidey holes, you will also see how many congas are on it or if there's congas on it because a big grey conger eel stands out a mile on a dark background and more often than not, you'll see their heads poking out of everywhere. What it does allow you to do as well is if you've got a wreck that maybe is quite solid at the front and quite still in one piece, it might not have all the hidey holes in it. Whereas the stern of the wreck, for instance, may be all broken up and all lots of mangled wreckage and that may be the bit where all the congas are hiding. If you look at the footage and see that, that's going to save you a hell of a lot of time anchoring up at the bow of the boat where the congas have got to come to you as opposed to fishing the stern where you can drop straight in and be straight into the fish, okay? Um, it'll also tell you whether or not you need to up your gear and that sort of stuff because of the type of boat it is. Um, and it's a really good source of information. And if you're not following your local diving channels, you are missing out. Sticking with a diving theme, diving groups. All your local harbours and marinas, nine times out of ten, there's a local diving group. We've got them here at New Haven Scuba and Brighton Marina. Um, tip your hat to these guys and go in there and say, I'm a local fisherman, I do rod and line, and I'm interested in such and such a wreck. What can you tell me about it? And the key question to ask is, what's the life like on the wreck? And they will tell you whether there's bass on there, there's cod, uh, and etc etc uh, and what they also will do is if you ask them nicely if you lose any gear on there or perhaps an anchor or if you say to them if you come across any small boat anchors that you aren't doing anything with i'd love it get them a little drink for it because an anchor a, a five kilo bruce anchor is about 80 90 quid and they may give it to you and they would love nothing more than a tenner for to buy some tea for their, their, their little dive shop and stuff like that um, and they're really good friendly bunch most of them as well any lures they whip off the wrecks, if, the, if you're friendly with them, they'll come up and give them to you. I've had countless bits of gear this year. I've had two small anchors and some really nice Storm GT lures, a couple of slow jigs that everyone's into at the minute. Um, and and it's, they're just good guys to know. Number six, again, something that not everyone will be aware of, but is a great source of uh, reef and bank finding. And that is on a really rough day when the wind is really blowing on shore, Get up to your local cliff top and have a look and just survey the area in front of you. You will see lots of little white patches around Green Sea. Now those white patches or white horses or white caps, whatever you call them in your area, that is where the surf is breaking over a shallower bit of ground than the ground around it. That's what creates those little white patches of sea amongst all the green or blue. Uh, they are reefs and banks that you want to be going and putting a lure over or putting a bit of bait over because I guarantee you they will hold fish of some description, be it cod, bass, wrasse, or if it's sand, maybe turbot, big place, all that sort of stuff. And using the Navionics app, which I'm going to come on to in a minute, you can have a look, zoom in, find the little reef, mark it, get the numbers, and it's another little place that if you're steaming over or you're doing an exploratory trip to go and test out some ground, then that is something that you want to be checking out 100%. Sticking with that sort of, uh, that sort of uh, area as well, on a big set of tides, and for me at New Haven here, that's a 6, 8, 7, 7, 2 sort of tide, even 7, 4 at some times. On a nice, calm, flat day, just have a little drift about and just get your peepers on the ground around you because you will see lots of big swirly swirls and maybe little bits of rough weather in a place where seemingly it's all calm. And again, much like the waves breaking over in the big rough weather, 
That is underwater obstructions that are going to hold fish. More often than not, when that tide running is running on a big reef and it creates that boil, bass in particular will sit behind that as an ambush point. And as that tide washes over and the little fish come down, that's when they're going to nip out and they're going to be taking the baits. So if you put a live bait down there or a nice lure, you are going to catch bass. Some of my more successful bass spots inside are those exact little bits of ground, little football, uh, sorry, car sized bits of ground, little lumps where the bass are sitting behind it. And the seemingly, the, the area of reef around it holds nothing. You go around that one little bit of rock and bang, 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 and they're there all the time. So keep an eye out for those. And likewise, even if you're right out at sea and you start seeing some swirly waves, that is a bank or a wreck. And it may not even be marked on your sounder, but go over it with your boat, plot it, and have a little dangle over it, because it will hold fish, I guarantee it. Boat yards and tackle shops, another nice simple one, okay. Tackle shops, it's their job to sell you tackle, talk about what's being caught. Fishermen love to talk about their catches. I do, I've got a YouTube channel and you're watching it now. I love to show what I've caught and it's no different, okay. Uh, tackle shops back in the day were the YouTube of the, t of, of the now and everyone would go in there talking about what they caught and that's where you'd get all your information from. What rigs, what bait, what fish, what size, whereabouts and it's still the same today, okay. Get in there and have a conversation and just ask what's being caught. If you've got any prominent fishermen in your area, just say, what so-and-so caught recently? Has he said anything? And more often than not, they will tell you. Boatyards. I've got a, a, a brilliant boatyard down near me, Simpsons, and they all go fishing. And then also, all the fishermen go in there and buy their little bits and bobs. Just ask the same sort of questions, because more often than not, they will, ha they will have ears on the ground as to who's catching what and where, and it may give you a steer if you're undecided of where to go fishing. Next one. It's a paid app, it's called Navionics, and it links in with your sounder if you've got it, okay? But it is an absolutely brilliant little app on your phone, and I have found so much ground on there, it is unreal, especially turbot ground. I have got stacks of ground to go and try next year just by using this Navionics app. It does cost about 70, 80 quid for the year, but if, like me, you are serious about fishing, this is a must-have. It's got the wrecks on there and it shows you it all in 3D. You can have a look which way it's laying across the tide. Um, you can see the shape of it, if any bits are broken off around it. Uh, any banks in there, you can zoom in and have a look. And it's, it's just brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. What I will say is if you have the Navionics app, just be aware if you don't turn off the um, community feature, every mark that you plot on your phone, it will plot onto the app for everybody. I have found so many little marks and bits of ground everywhere on this Navionics app where people have put in secret bass mark or pollock wreck, cod wreck, bass wreck, and they think it's just for themselves on their app. It's not. If you have the community edit feature on, it will share that feature with everybody. And if you zoom in enough, you will find all these little marks here, there, and everywhere, okay? So just be aware of that when you're using the app. And the last one coming on to is Rexite.eu. This is the largest database of known wrecks uh, out there, and it is a massive, comprehensive selection of every wreck and all the details of the surrounding ground, and it is absolutely brilliant. Again, like the Navionics app, it is a paid thing. Uh, I can't remember what it was. I think it was about 40 quid. Um, but again, if you are serious, it is a great thing to have in your arsenal uh, because you buy the chart for your area, and then you can click on every individual wreck, and it will show ye olde pictures of it when it was drawn in like the, the pen and ink posters. Um, it will tell you whether it's dead or alive. It will tell you what tonnage it was, what it's made out of, how it was sunk. Divers would have uploaded photos of it there as well. It will give you the exact location. It will tell you how accurate that location is. And it will tell you as well the ground around it, whether it's on sand waves or broken shingle or reef. It will tell you it all. And it is an absolutely brilliant source of information, okay? Um, and that summarizes there. That's the last one that I've got for you now of um, ways that you can find new bits of ground, both either being at sea or at home, and it will help you uh, put more fish on deck or on the, on the bank, okay? Biggest one, though, is the diary, okay? Keep a diary. It is a holy grail for fishermen. 
Um, and if you can get hold of someone else's diary, you are laughing. This is my one, but I've got lots of entries in there from other people. Um, I hope that's been helpful and useful, okay? I will keep putting the content out. Do give it a like and subscribe and a comment. Maybe you've got another way of finding um, new marks that I haven't mentioned. Please do pop a comment in there because it, it, it helps me and that's how my knowledge grows, okay? I will keep doing the videos. I enjoy this and I hope you do too and finding them informative. So please give a like and a follow because it just puts it up the rankings and it helps other people on YouTube find the same content that you're watching now, okay? So until next time, thanks from the Appetit Angler, and I'll see you in the next video.